You're losing deals that you were already 80% of the way to closing because you're not doing follow-ups right. How do you know? Well, are too many of your deals going dark on you? Do you get a lot of new prospects, but you lose traction after the first meeting? Are you wondering how to effectively follow up and maintain momentum while not being annoying? Well, you're not alone. Thousands of salespeople say following up and managing their deals through the sales cycle is the most challenging part of the sales process. All right, it's time for the field sales stat of the week. 80% of deals require five follow-ups or more. Think about that. On average, it takes at least five follow-up efforts after the initial sales contact before a customer says yes. Five. I mean, this is hard because salespeople are often socially well attuned. So being annoying is against their nature. So as a result, a lot of salespeople end up giving up too soon and don't follow up enough because their instincts are telling them not to. The extra call often makes the difference between winning and losing a deal and winning or losing a deal is often the difference between crushing your quota or having your quota crush you. In this video, you're gonna learn the secrets to mastering sales call follow-ups so that you'll stop losing those deals that you were already 80% of the way to winning. The key skills that we're gonna talk about today are when and how to follow up and what messages to follow up with and then when to walk away. First, when to follow up, right after the meeting. As soon as you leave the room, the prospect's emotions and interest in your products are sky high. But with each passing day, emotions go down and your number one enemy comes into play, procrastination. Deals are often not lost to a competitor, but to the status quo. Your prospect can feel that implementing your product is not that urgent, it can wait, and then that's when deals go sideways. So how do we follow up? Right after the meeting, you send a thank you email. So what's in this email? Well, you first you say, thank you for your time. And this refreshes their memory about when you met and who you were. You mentioned key takeaways from the conversation. And this shows that you were listening. And most importantly, this is the key piece here, you address your next steps and you address their next steps. And this is your ask. And this keeps the ball moving. This is the classic in sales, the give to get. Here's a sample thank you email that you can use. It's a template that I use at my company, Badger Maps. John, thank you for your time this afternoon. This thanks them for their time and refreshes the memory that you just met. It was great to get a better understanding of your goals on this project. The key to success here is to get the sales reps in the field to get one or two more meetings a day. This is your key takeaway from the conversation of what they wanted. It shows that you're listening. I will build out the analysis that we discussed, where we talk about how much time your reps will save on a weekly basis from having better routes. Then we can determine how many more meetings your reps will get. This addresses your next steps. I will do this. You mentioned that you can send me the mileage reports from the sales team from the last month so that I can build the analyses. Just let me know when I can expect that so that I can reserve time with one of our consultants. This addresses their next steps, you will do this, and gives a reason why you need them to follow a certain timeline. Have a great week. So now I'm gonna give you one of the best kept secrets, something to say during your sales meeting that will help you get a response out of your prospect and keep your prospect engaged throughout the sales cycle. During the meeting, I like to say something like, Mr. Prospect, what is the best way for us to keep in touch on this? I'm guessing you get like 200 or 300 emails a day like I do. Is email the best way for us to keep in contact or is there something else that I can do? Is there a special thing I can put in the subject line to make sure uh, my emails will stand out here? So did you see what was in there? By asking permission to follow up and asking the prospect what works best for them, you lower your odds of being an annoyance. And most importantly, you hear right from the horse's mouth, what's the best way, the most effective way to reach them. This gets you a whole bunch of steps ahead on your follow-up. You're not just focusing on how to conclude a meeting when you're in your sales call. You're also paving the way to future follow-ups that you're gonna have with this prospect. Just ask your prospect what works best for them and they'll usually just tell you. This gets back to a piece of wisdom that salespeople should always, always keep in mind. Ask and you shall receive. 
There are a ton of ways to follow up after a sales meeting. And to maximize your chances of closing a sale, you have to mix up the way you're interacting with your customer and have a, a multi-step follow-up sequence. It may involve email, phone, text, voice, invitations to webinars, conferences. The intention is to stay top of mind with your prospects. Don't forget, your prospect is just a person and they can only do a few things and only the top priorities get done in this busy world. Let's say you called up to follow up with your prospect and they missed your call. How do you leave a voice message that will actually get returned? Well, first, the basics. You gotta provide your key info, your name, your phone number. But then, and here's the key, say something that is intriguing or that they want so that they want to call you back. Here's an example of how I would leave a phone message. Hi, John. It's Steve with Badger Maps. Thanks again for having me in last Thursday. I'm calling because I did the analysis for you on how many fewer miles your field sales reps would drive a week and how many more meetings they would get with that save time. I'd like your input for the next step of the model on how the conversion rates will work and so then we can get the ROI numbers for you. You can get me on my cell at 555-555-1234. That's 555-555-1234. So do you see what I did there? First I thanked him, then I said why I was calling. It was because I'm doing analysis for him that he's interested in, and I know this from having my meeting with him, so there's a reason for him to call me back. Do you see how that's so much more powerful than, hi John, it's Steve with Badger Maps, please give me a call back, thanks, bye. Whenever you tell people to do something, they always ask why and what's in it for me. This is a key concept in sales and it certainly applies with follow-ups. Give to get. With the first message, you made calling you back a priority that will get done. And with the second message, you didn't. Also, did you see how I left the phone number twice? That's because it makes it easier, way easier for them to write down if they've heard it twice. You wanna make it as easy as possible for them to call you back, just in case. So when you're following up, here are a few tricks that you can use. First, if every email from you is a request, your prospect is gonna cringe at the sight of your email and avoid it like the plague. You want them to associate your emails and your phone calls with something valuable. Share industry news, interesting articles that might be helpful to them or interesting to them. Plus, if you're giving them things, they feel like they owe you a favor and so they're willing to respond to you. These last two are two of my favorite follow-up tricks that always help me move the deal downfield. The first one, personally connect with your prospects. During the meeting, you probably found out about things that you have in common that you can keep building on. Maybe you asked about the photos of their kids they had on their desk or a photo of them skydiving. Regardless of what the thing was, you can mention it and it can connect you to them. And hopefully in the meeting, you're able to find something that you guys can connect over and that you have in common. The second thing is reinforcing your value. It's repetition. It's a proven fact that people have to hear something more than once before it sinks in. You may know your product and why it's valuable back and forth, but your customers might not get it the first time they hear the message. So don't make the mistake of thinking that if a prospect heard a pitch once, they understand it because chances are they didn't. Tell them again and again and again. So what are some of the things that we should avoid when following up? It's important to avoid saying that you're just checking in or that you just wanted to follow up because this comes across as really pestery and annoying and doesn't position you as bringing value to the table. Don't trick your prospect into clicking to open an email. Nobody likes to be fooled. Don't apologize for your emails. Don't say, oh, I'm sorry that I'm emailing you right now. Don't say, how are you? Or hope you're well because it's cheesy. Don't reference past fails attempts at getting a hold of the person or calling them or emailing them. That's just a part of it. Don't use a weak CTA like, oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't try to re-explain all the features that you've already talked about or just kind of do a dump of that. And avoid industry jargon, which uh, doesn't always work out that well. So now let's talk about the ideal day and time to follow up with your prospect. This is a key, key principle. People buy when they're ready to buy, not when you're ready to sell to them. Not all days of the week and times of the day are created equal. Based on prior experience, try to figure out what the best times are for this particular customer and, and follow up when you'll have the highest odds of getting a response. Based on research done at MIT, the 
best days to connect are Wednesdays and Thursdays for both emails and calls. The worst day is Monday, obviously. Everybody hates Mondays. And the best time is between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. because people just ate lunch and people are more happy and receptive after they've eaten lunch and everybody likes lunch. During commute times can be a, a good time for, for some people, depending on their preferences and how they commute. Maybe they like to catch up on emails when they're on the train, or maybe they like to take calls when they're in the car. The key is pay attention to what works with a given prospect and just do that thing. I once had a customer that I figured out I could always catch her at like 5.15 in the evening on a Friday because that's like the only time she was free. Yeah, I've had other customers that would have been three drinks deep at the bar by then, but, but she was available. Next, I'd like to talk about when do you walk away? At what point do you just stop following up? You know, you have to sometimes. Your time is valuable and you have to taper off the investment in a prospect at some point. But as you consider walking away, keep in mind that 80% of deals take more than five attempts to close the deal. And also keep in mind that 44% of sales reps stop after the first follow-up. So don't make this common mistake and stop following up too soon. What you should do, I call the five attempts follow-up strategy. And five is not a rule. Some deals will close after two attempts and some deals will need 12 attempts and interactions. But use your instincts and use your judgments. You need to understand if your prospect is saying no or not now or not yet. And if they're saying not yet, it's fair to ask, when would be a good time for my next follow-up? They'll often be honest with you because they don't want to waste their time or your time. And it's always important before you stop following up, always send a breakup email. What's a breakup email? Here's an example of a breakup email that I use. Hi, John, are you open to discussing using Badger for your team? Let me know if I should stop following up and I'm happy to reconnect in the future at a better time. All the best, Steve. So that's it, guys. Start following up better and start closing more of your deals. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you've seen, please share and subscribe. See the link in the description below to get all the field sales training videos that I've made. If there's a particular field sales topic that you would like me to cover, just mention it in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me. It's steve at badgermapping.com. Happy selling, everybody.